Hey everyone, uh, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital checking in. Today is Tuesday, October 17th. It's around 6 o'clock New York time. U.S. markets are closed. Um, so today was a very busy day in equities and in rates. Um, actually, the last couple of days have been very interesting because the market, the equity market seems to really can't, can't really find a sense of direction while you know rates are clearly moving higher. And the dollar's been sort of fluctuating. And so uh, today's retail sales data certainly came in hotter than expected. And that certainly caused rates to move sharply higher. Especially, I mean, really across the entire curve. The two-year rate closed at a new cycle high today, reaching you know as high as five and a quarter percent. Um, and so this is almost implying that the market is now at least considering the fact that the Fed may be looking to maybe raise rates another time before this cycle of rate hikes is over. And that's what this movement in the two years would suggest. I, I don't know that there's really much upside here beyond, let's say, 5.3%. 5.3% is a, a level that you know we would have to go back um, many years to go and find. But here it is right here. So going back to June of 06. So Given that we don't have enough information to say that the Fed is going to raise rates more than one more time, I think at this point we need to think that the two year is probably capped around this five and a quarter to five thirty level. Now, what may not be capped is obviously the ten year rate, because you can see that it looks like there's a bull flag that formed here and then we broke out of it and really moved sharply higher today, increasing by another thirteen basis points to move up to a new closing cycle high um, at 4.84% call it. And um, at this point, you know, we can clearly see that the RSI is not an overbought territory. Um, the Bollinger Band were certainly not as overbought as we were back at these points in time. Uh, if this is a, a bull flag, then we could surmise from it that there's probably more upside. Uh, and really, once we take this 490 level out call it on the 10 year uh, like the two year we would have to go back many years to really find the next major level of resistance and that comes somewhere around five and a quarter percent and you know when we just do an extension off of this um, pattern uh, we could probably we get about the same uh, distance and if we do it from a more conservative basis you could see a 100% extension takes you somewhere to around 520. So it's given where the front of the curve is, given where um, the how the yield curve inversion is at this point in time, um, given that we know that it's likely that we can see the back of the curve continue to rise and the front of the curve stay sort of stagnant, it seems possible that you could see the 10-year rise another 25 basis points. And that would really only take you back to around zero. And we can see that this area around negative 35 basis points is a level of consolidation for the 10-2 curve. And so a break above this, I think, would certainly be a sign that the 10-year is heading significantly higher. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that on the 30-year, when you do it minus the, the three-month treasury, uh, you can see that this is also at a important le level, an important point. Uh, which could suggest that the 30-year is also going to be making another run higher, potentially moving above this high. Again, this has a similar you know, bull flag type structure in it. Uh, again, like the 10-year, not really overbought at this point in time and would suggest that there's still room for this to go up from here. Now, this is, now this is important because if we can think about where rates are going to go, maybe we can figure out where the equity market's going to go. And in fact, when we look at the S&P 500 futures and we overlay it with the 10-year Treasury futures, um, at least going back to uh, July, the two have been moving side by side. They've been basically mimicking each other. And when we go back and look further in time, this relationship actually started some time ago. Uh, if we go back all the way to the top here, you can see that you know as the market was basically falling, rates were rising. And but the pattern grew stronger, um, it would seem, uh, this summer. Uh, when we got to this point in time, you can see it got much more more correlated. Um, 
and certainly you could see off of these lows as well as this price was moving higher price has been moving with price uh there was a separation right in here um but again this is what we're generally seeing at this point in time and so this really kind of gives us a little bit of a clue maybe in terms of what's next in the equity market and at least when we look at it from a more short-term point of view you can see that price of the 10-year treasury rate has moved down sharply the equity market so far has held up i would say it's not entirely common to see this because we've seen this before where um equity prices moved higher at the middle end of july 10-year rates were moving uh 10-year prices were moving down again you saw 10-year prices moving down uh, stock prices moving higher and this persisted for you know a few days july 24th and then really equities didn't start turning down until august 1st the full week uh, here you can see again uh, september 7th uh, and equities didn't really start turning down for a full week and here if we look here we're october 12th and so we're coming up about on a full week and so it may be actually within the next day or two. So uh, it could very well be the case that uh, there's still another leg lower here coming for equities, which would, again, if this is a path and a sign for what's to come, uh, th this would suggest that we're going to get back to these lows and maybe undercut it when we look at the S&P 500 futures. Uh, when we look at the cash market, when we look at the cash market, a couple of things stand out really quickly on the S&P 500. Um, we have what looks like some sort of uh, triangle pattern here. Uh, you could argue maybe it's a uh, rising wedge to some degree. But what I think is interesting more so is that this pattern really resembles this pattern. But this, instead of there being a head here, it kind of dips down and then it completes. So again, this you can see the three legs up. You can see the head, the shoulder, and the head. Here you can see the three legs up. You can see a shoulder, an indention, another shoulder. And so it makes you wonder again, is the next leg going to be lower here, returning us to this level? We've seen this similar thing happen now on a number of occasions. Here you can see we had the three legs up and then you had this consolidation with the exit. Um, again, even when you go back into this period of time, you see the three legs up, the consolidation, uh, and then the exit. So again, this looks similar to that with the three legs up. The only thing that's sort of confusing here is that you don't really have this same head looking structure. But when you look at the NASDAQ, you can clearly see that there is that same structure. You can see there was a three legs up with this head and the shoulders and now per perhaps potentially suggesting we move lower again. You would need to break 14,990 for that to really be confirmed and then I would be looking for 14,700. Likewise, this is a resistance level up at this red line around 15,300. This dates back to the highs back in the middle of uh, July. So again, that's sort of a, a similar pattern, to, again, what we've seen in the past. So this these patterns are suggestive along with the price action we've seen in rates that we probably return to these lows. Um, when we look at the Dow, it's also uh, not really giving us a clear indication. What is clear here, though, is when we look at the Dow, there's a, a, a channel that's rising. Typically, when you get rising flags, this is not a bull flag. These are usually corrective flags. Typically, you see a reversal and a return to the lower end of it. Um, this is just typically what these rising flags do. Uh, it doesn't mean it has to happen. But again, my guess would be is that if you were to take out the 34,170 level, you're then talking about opportunities to rise back to this trend line, uh, which is something that dates back to the um, to this level in June. Likewise, if this does end up breaking and you fill this gap here at 33,560, it probably means you're going to see a return to this 32,900 level. And again, given... Um, the patterns, given the price correlation we're seeing, uh, that would be one that would be suggestive that we see these uh, lower these lower movements. Um, when we just go back to the futures really quickly again, um, we can also see that the dollar is having a lot of influence over um, where these prices are going. And you can see that when we take the Canadian dollar and instead of uh, looking at it up this way, we invert it. 
you can see that this is also having some influence over where prices of stocks are going. And um, again, not perfect, but again, if we can figure out generally the sense that the dollar is going to be getting stronger and that the Canadian dollar, this Canadian dollar USD CAD is going to be rising, then uh, this would also suggest that we would see lower uh, stock prices to come. So these are just some tools that you could maybe put to use that could give you a little bit of an edge uh, as people try to figure out what's happening in the market. When we swing over to the DAX, I don't have any neat relationships to show you here. But um, again, here's your, your trend line that we've been tracing out and following. Here was an attempt to break out. We failed and then we moved down. Here was an attempt to break out. We failed and we moved down. Um, what's interesting is that when, when this happened, we took out these lows and made a new low. So far, all we've done is gotten back to the prior lows, basically. The question is whether or not we're going to make a new low and test this 14,000. 800 level. I mean, certainly when you look at the DAX, it's not oversold. It's not oversold on the Bollinger Band. It's not oversold on the RSI. Um, there is clearly uh, some resistance here at 15,300. There's also very strong resistance up here around 15,570. Um, when we look at the overall structure of this move here, you can see that um, there's an impulsive move down. You could say one, two, three, four, five, and then this looks like a, uh, maybe a, a, a five with an, with an A and a B, and maybe there's another C wave coming, which would again maybe suggest we, we rally and test this level of resistance at 15,580, um, while a drop of below this 15,140 level, I think, opens the door to a, a retest of this low and potentially a a break again overall this looks like a bit of a distribution pattern which would also suggest maybe we have another leg lower coming um the FTSE has been fairly resilient compared to the other markets um the FTSE you know again broke this trend line here's your uptrend in it uh we came down broke the uptrend we broke the downtrend uh came back into it got down to the 7380 area came back up and so far we haven't been able to get through 7700 but this has actually held up fairly well and again like the um, other indices we're not really seeing signs of an index that's overbought and that would suggest that you know maybe the FTSE can continue to rally if it can break above this 7680 zone because even if you extend this trend line up you know you can see that you can get you can get somewhat higher into the mid 7,750s or so before you really have to worry about this trend line. And um, we should move it over. And uh, again, there wouldn't be resistance until 7,740 or so. Uh, at least in this case, you have a trend that's moving higher. Uh, again, there is some consolidation here. But uh, the difference, I think, between this and what we're seeing on the more hourly chart on the S&P is that this chart has been consolidating now for a really long period of time. And this looks more like uh, potentially base building than it looks like um, a consolidation with a, with an angular tilt maybe moving lower. But again, uh, you just have to continue to keep an eye on all of this and, and watch how these levels break down. And, you know, again, I, I think ultimately speaking, if you begin to see you know, uh, I think that these markets are being very heavily influenced by changes in currency exchange rates and 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 then basically in interest rates as well. And so, you know, because those are all going to ultimately affect earnings and such and financial conditions and liquidity. So these are some of the things that I've been looking at, some of the areas where I think the, these markets may be heading. Anyway, hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Bye.